Now with challenge 23, there's actually quite a lot of code that you need to do here. Uh, you could do like a really, really simple version of this as an algorithm, but to actually program it, it's going to take you a few steps. But don't worry, because a lot of it you can copy and paste. So the first thing is we want to input how much money you want to change. So the whole idea with this algorithm is something that you might use in like a carnival or uh, the fair where you want to get change to use in the machines. So let's put in money as our input and you're going to ask them how much money. Now there's two things you can do here. You could do it as a whole number or you could do it as an integer. So there's a lot of fancy things that you could do with this algorithm. For now, I'm going to keep it really simple and just put it as an integer. So enter the amount you want to change. I'm going to say in pounds. Once we've asked for the input, we're going to need to do some selection. And at the end, in our output, we need to basically say how much of each coin will be given in. So we're going to say coins equals, and this is going to be equal to our calculation at the end. So what we're going to do is print and say you have got, and that's going to be how many coins they've got. So, in this next bit, we need to basically put a decision in, and it says to select which coin you want to convert to. So, we need to give them a choice, so we could put coin choice equals input. And what I'm going to do this time is I've already kind of planned this out, just to save me a little bit of time, I'm going to paste this. So what I've done here is, you'll notice at the start, I've put three speech marks in. So instead of using a two speech marks, if you put one, two, three apostrophes in, it allows us to create this big text message. Now that is just nice for setting it out like a nice, easy, easy to read menu. So now it basically tells the user that they can choose A, B, C, D, E, F, or G. So it's going to ensure that they just type in a nice easy value for you to use. So now we can use those values and it makes everything a lot more easier. So if the coin choice is equal to A, then we can do a certain option. If it's equal to B, then we'll do a different one. So for this particular one, whatever they ask for their money in, in pounds, their coins is gonna be equal to money multiplied by one so basically if they put in that they want to change five pounds they're going to get five coins if they um import 10 pounds it's still going to be 10 coins that they get back so that's how that one's going to work now what we can do is copy and paste this and as you've done in a lot of the other algorithm challenges recently we're just going to change the values. So coin choice this time is going to be B. And if it's 50p, it's going to need to be times 0.5. No, because that'll half it. It's going to need to be 2, sorry. Because 2 is how many 50p is going to £1. Now we're going to copy and paste this for all of the others. And we're going to put C, D, E, F and G. And you basically just got to work out how many coins you would get in one pound. So if it's G, it's one penny. So you know you're going to get a hundred. If it's two P's, you're going to get 50. If it's five P's, you're going to get 20. If it's 10 P's, you're going to get 10. If it's 20 P's, you're going to get five. And that should be all of it done. So now that's going to work out what coins is, depending on which option you choose from the menu. And at the end, it's going to tell us how many coins that we've actually got. 
So providing we put a whole number in, providing we put a full five pound note or 10 pound note in, that will work absolutely fine. Let's have a little test. So enter the amount you want to change. Let's put five pound. And how much, which coins do we want? Let's say 10 P's. You've got 50 coins. So what we're gonna do is just try and improve that program a little bit. So, first of all, at the end, we've got this output. So one thing that we could do is tell them how many coins and of what type have we got. So just there, we've said you have got 50, or yeah, you have got 50 as the output. So we could say coins, and now we know that it's gonna say you have got 50 coins. We could even put it in to say what their coin choice was, but that starts getting a lot co more complicated. So let's just see the difference that's made. And we'll try a different one this time. So let's put in 20 pound and we'll choose it in 50 P's. We've got 40 coins. So we know it's working. It gives us a little bit better output and you can see this nice menu system that we've learned how to do as well. So I think at this stage, that would be it. If you are quite happy with that, then you can stop the video at this point. If you want to learn a little bit more about something called a mod and div, because at the moment we can only put in full amounts. We can't put in £5.50 or £5.70 or anything like that. So it might be interesting to play around with those. So what I've done now to try and make this a little bit more efficient in case someone has like a random amount of money. So let's just say someone walks up to the till, for example, and asks for 50p coins to use on the slot machines or on um, some sort of game arcade. And they've got, say, £27.86. And that's all the money that they've got to their name. So they give you that £27.86. And they say they want it in 50 P's. So now it's telling us that we get 55 coins. And that's because we haven't quite got enough to get that last um, 50 P piece. So the way that we've done that is two things. First one is we've asked for the input and we've put it as a decimal. So that allows us to put in 27.86. Then when we've chosen the coin... What we've done instead of multiplying by a particular value is we've used this function called div. And what div does is it shows us how many times a value goes into a variable. So for example, on this one, this is gonna say how many times 0.1 goes into money. So if I've input 27 pound 86, we will try and put 0.1 into that as many times as we can. And what you'll find is it comes back with a whole number and then obviously you'll have a few pennies left over. So that's just a way of making it super accurate so that if someone does want to put a decimal in and if they do want, if they do have sort of an odd number, it will tell them exactly how many coins they use. So on this algorithm, we've learned about different data types like float, We've learned how to do this menu with extended strings and we've also learned how to use a function called div.